Hi there and welcome to this tutorial. Before we get started you have to understand the difference between a store port SCSI driver and a mini port SCSI driver. If you go to Google which I've done here and search for Windows SCSI mini port you'll find this website and if you open it up it gives a very clear description of the difference between the two. And if you scroll through the pages you'll you'll see what he's talking about. You do that on your own. Basically what he's saying is that the store port mini driver was designed from Windows 2000 on. It provides higher bandwidth throughput to the drive, hard drive, for optical storage and RAID operation. Whereas the original mini port drivers do not provide the, ex the extra bandwidth required by today's RAID configurations. So having that in mind, let's take a look at what kind of drivers are available today for the AMD. Here we're taking a look at my uh, my CD-ROM that came with my motherboard, ASUS motherboard support. Looking down here under the RAID Vista and Windows 7 drivers, we find there's this README note right here. And if you notice that these are 86S64S files, which means they're the store port drivers, which it says right down here at the bottom. Okay, here we're looking at a zip file I downloaded from the internet and the full name of the file if the video capture ever catch up, catches up it's not going to show that video anyway it was downloaded from the internet from the AMD website and if we unzip it take a look inside find there's lots of files I'm mainly concerned with the text files at the bottom down at the bottom we have a readme text if you open that up it talks about S's. It says it's a store port drivers. So this is what you want to be using. The other README text files talk about mini port drivers which you do not want to be using. And also down here. So all the files in this particular zip file you only want to use in the files that have the S after their name. And if you go back, look for a second. That's what we had from the manufacturer, too. We had the S's after the names. So make sure you're using store port drivers. Otherwise, you're going to lose efficiency. Your drive won't be nearly as fast. OK, now we've moved over to the uh, Windows 7 machine. I want to click on Start, click on Control Panel, click on Backup and Restore. And here we have a GoFlex drive I use on a USB external drive, USB 3.0. And I have several backups on it, but this is where you normally go if you want to do your first backup. It would be a setup backup here the first time, but I've already done it, so now it just wants to repeat what I did the last time. We'll go down here and we can also change our settings. Can't believe it takes that long to load. Okay, and it went and found all these locations where you could back up. So you would normally select, I selected this drive, did my next and everything, and then this ends up being the default backup drive. So normally just back up now to back up your current non-RAID system into a system image file. Then once you get that done, you go ahead and convert your computer into a RAID system. And you come back here, and we'll show you the details later, but basically you come back here and you select what to restore from, and it'd be the one you just did. Mine was yesterday. That's my non-RAID Windows 7 minimal system system image file. So that's what we use to restore it. So I just want to go over those details of how to use the backup restore system built into Windows 7. Okay, this time we're going to configure for RAID. So we hit delete on a particular motherboard to come up into the BIOS screen. It supports mouse, so therefore, go up here and we'll click on advanced and say the configuration. And you notice we have one drive right now. I don't have the other RAID drive installed. 
There's no drives on the other ports. What we want to do while we're here, though, we want to come in here and look at this for a second. Say to ports 5 and 6, they default to HCI along, along with ports 1 and 4, single drive configurations. But what I've read, you want to change this to IDE to improve the reliability of your ROM drives. So it's recommended you switch this to IDE for ports 5 and 6. Now, serial SATA ports 1 and 4, we're going to change that to RAID at this time because they're trying to establish the striped RAID drive system. So once we've done that, we can also go ahead and look at the boot sequence. It's saying it's going to boot off this, this Samsung drive, which is one of my RAID drives. So that's the first step of this process. Now we have to shut down, save, F10 to save. If I get out of this, I guess. F10 to save, enter to do it. Okay, now that we've enabled the RAID function in the BIOS, it's going to wake up with a control, go to catch with control F and configure the RAID configuration right here. Once we have G drive assignments right now, we have two drives, port 0, port 1, single drive, single drive. We're going to escape out of that. We're going to choice two is there's no LD, but down here we can do control C to find one. So control C. And the default is to RAID 0. And you take spacebar and step through the various RAID configurations. We'll go back to RAID 0 for this example. Down arrow key takes the next choice and change the stripe block size. I'm leaving mine at 64. Down arrow initialization fast or none. Don't know what that means. Gigabyte boundary. On off, I don't know what that means. I'll leave it alone. Notice here we have assignments. So we've got to answer yes, we want to assign that to our RAID array 0. And we down arrow, assign the other drive to RAID, RAID array 0. Now down here we can control Y and save this function. Okay, we're going to call it RAID 0. RAID 0, 500 gigabyte, SATA 2 drive. Press enter, control Y, let's see. So do control Y to make sure you remove the master boot record, control Y to modify. We're going to leave maximum capacity by hitting enter. So now we've established our LD number one, which is RAID mode zero. So at this point, we can escape and view it. And notice now it's, it's a RAID array. It's array one, drive one, array one, drive two. So at this time, we're finished configuring our BIOS to support the striped RAID array concept. So now it's time to go ahead and install some drivers on this RAID array. So we're going to escape out of this window. We're going to reboot, yes. Okay, this time we're booting with a system restore disk and not using a system install disk. And it's still configured for RAID 0. And just leave it alone. Come up to the system repair disk, press any key, boot that thing up. And once it's finished loading, I'll come back. So at this point we'll go ahead and click next and searching for Windows installations. We say no, we don't repair, we can't find anything. 
At this point we'll do load drivers. Switch out the um, restore CD and replace it with the motherboard CD. So we make sure we get the correct drivers. And it spins up and it'll find it here shortly. So now we have the didn't find it yet. We got a D drive, which is our motherboard disk. Go for drivers, RAID, AMD, driver, disk, RAID, Windows 7, X64. Notice here we have the S's. I believe it was this one. I forget which one it is. It's not that one. Okay. Must be this one. So now I notice it has drivers. So we'll go ahead and add the drivers. Okay, now we're searching for Windows installations. Notice he found one now. He found one on drive E, which is a USB one terabyte drive. So that means that the recovery disk thinks he has a RAID 0 pair to go ahead and restore to because he found he found that before he could look for this. So next we're going to say uh, next Windows cannot find a system image. That's because I didn't plug in my drive after all. So let me do that. Try again. Scanning for disk images. And I find my GoFlex 1 terabyte G drive, which is a USB drive. All right now it's running USB 2.0 because the drivers aren't installed on the motherboard yet. The motherboard drivers aren't installed, I should say. So we're going to use the latest available, which was yesterday, the one we agreed to in the beginning of this video. So we click Next. We're going to format and reputation of disks. We're going to exclude disks we don't want to touch. We don't want our SD card disk touched. We say OK. All we're going to do now is click Next. Go to restore from that. You say okay, go for it. All this will be formatted, replaced. Yep, I'm sure. So now it's restoring that non RAID system image we backed up yesterday. It's restoring it back to a RAID configuration today. And that's what I'll have to say about that. Okay, it says the restore is completed. We'll go ahead and do a restart now. Pull out the, uh, the repair disk so the DVD drive is empty. We'll see what happens. Won't touch anything. Let it go through and keep the same RAID configuration. There's a RAID configuration still exists. One last chance to go into the BIOS. No floppy, there is booting off the RAID 0 configuration at this time. And you will notice over here that I do have our archive that was on that backup. So it's not just a Windows 7 disk. And it still sees my USB drives. And the big important thing here is see what it's doing now, it's shuffling because it remember it named it as drive, I think it was D or something. So Windows got to reshuffle it back to drive C if you just reboot it with no drives connected. Restart it now. Pull off any external USB drives you have. 
I happen to have two. I want reboots, everything should be correct. So once again we go through the reboot process. All this takes time. And once again we're booting off the RAID 0 drive. So at this point in time we'll go down here and we'll do a right click on start in Windows Explorer. Notice it's local drive C. And it's only driving the whole computer. So it is possible to restore from a non-RAID Windows 7 backup to a RAID drive system.